Hey Squids, G reporting from Squid Kids to talk about one thing and one thing only, rollers. I'm sure a majority of us have had a tough time when encountering them, especially when we are starting out in the game. We may even think at one point that these pesky rollers are a bit overpowered. Super Smash Bros for Wii U had a similar issue upon its release with Little Mac. It was only with time that the community overall learned to deal with him. Now, it is our turn. Rollers play an important part in Splatoon, as they can quickly cover areas with paint, which allows for comebacks at critical points, both in turf war and in ranked battles. Rollers can claim splat zones in ranked battles quickly to remove control from the opposing team, or turn the tides of battle and claim a lot of turf in a pinch comeback in turf wars. So although they may be powerful and frustrating to deal with, rollers are here to stay, and it is our job to figure out how to counter them. So let's begin by targeting rollers first. Keep in mind that just because you are aware of an enemy roller ahead doesn't necessarily mean you have an advantage since rollers can cover ground faster due to their boost in run speed. So at the moment you see a roller, don't wait, take them out. That's one less roller covering ground for a time which will allow your team to make up whatever position was lost. Next, keep your distance. It may be easier said than done, but it is important to stay away. Don't jump down on an unsuspecting roller to be a hero because you may just end up a zero. Instead of this unwanted scenario, use your higher ground advantage and shoot down at them as opposed to chasing them down. If a roller catches you by surprise, splatter hop to a safe distance and retaliate at a more advantageous position. Keeping distance does not always have to be entirely defensive. If a roller is approaching you head on, simply walking backwards while shooting accurately gets rid of them before they can reach you. Speaking of reaching, let's discuss a roller's hitbox. It's very wide, spanning the whole length of the roller pad and it's an instant splat upon contact. What sort of contact you may ask? Any part of your inkling's body, yes that includes the toe. It can splat you from the sides, a considerable distance from the front, and even when elevated on a wall which can prove infuriating as you try to get away. Due to this hitbox, avoid rollers on hills. Stages such as Black Belly Skate Park and Port Mackerel have those short inclines that favor rollers hitbox and it can prove difficult to hit them in these positions, especially since the rollers walk speed is slightly better than yours. It is best to choose our battles wisely and approach them from a different angle. If you can, engage them from a higher position like the peaks of stages or high ledges since it takes a roller a lot longer to get up to these areas. So what about rollers who jump and spray? Sophisticated rollers implement this tactic effectively and it is difficult to get around it. It's not ideal to approach them head on, rather it is best to attempt flanking them by swimming away laterally and splatting them then. Moving side to side makes you increasingly difficult to hit since the roller spray, although wide, is directly in front of them. You want to keep some distance from the roller when doing this maneuver to avoid getting splat. So because of this, engaging rollers is best when you are on your own turf. The worst position to be in is when you are on a ground completely covered by enemy ink. Maneuvering side to side won't work in these situations and you'll most likely get stuck and then splatted. We also need to be aware of corners, because one of a roller's pastimes is hiding around a corner to pop out and splat an inkling that is obliviously traveling through a narrow path. These scenarios ask for shift cancelling, another nifty tech at our disposal. We can all recall times when traveling the stage in squid mode just to be surprised by an approaching roller and being stuck in the momentum of trying to turn around resulting in a rage filled splat. Shift cancelling is popping out of squid mode when swimming in one direction, popping back in to swim in the opposite direction. This cancels the lag that would result from attempting to turn around within the ink. Next, let's talk guns. There are weapons that have an easier time against rollers than others such as the Swiffers, Chargers and a 96 Gal since they outrange the rollers significantly. This range also allows for pressuring them around corners and chasing rollers versus the other way around. Weapons such as the Arrow Spray or Splattershot Jr. may have a more difficult time dealing with rollers jump sprays but in close quarters, a well aimed shot disposes them quite effectively. This is due to their rapid fire rate. All these weapons aside from chargers, squiffers, blasters can effectively use jump shots to increase the range of their weapon when dealing with rollers. It is advised not to jump shot rollers who are in range to hit you with their splats since they can also catch your jumps. But speaking of jumps, did you know you can jump over a roller? 
Just as you can jump over a seeker, you can also jump over an approaching roller, which could allow for an attack, but more importantly, allows you to get away to attack from a better position. There are also sub weapons that may assist in dealing with rollers, like ink mines, splat bombs, and the splash wall. The bubbler special can also handle them very well, waiting until they approach within your rage and activate it for an easy splash. Other sub weapons that also aid in combat are suction bombs to plant around corners when a roller approaches, or seekers to pressure them when they are coming directly towards you. Sub weapons also assist greatly when you suspect a roller waiting for you around the corner, allowing you to fish them out. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to subscribe to see more tips and tricks and look forward to more in-depth looks at each weapon type.